In last night's Peacekeeper Zoom call, Mark explains his case to set aside his council tax liability order. This was against the court because the lay magistrates and legal advisers simply did not do their jobs properly. There's a surprise. The first seven minutes, though, are an interesting brief on Kelvin's case on Monday. Now, when Mark gets the written order, which hopefully will be in about a week, week and a half, uh, we're going to do uh, another update and we're going to go through the whole thing. OK, so Kelvin, uh, just give people an update on that of what happened to you. Um, we had quite a good day Monday, even though the judge was an absolute arsehole, right, a stickler. He, um, in the end, he says, unhappily and reluctantly, I'll give you the adjournment. But that was after he tried every trick in the book to try and trip me over and uh, prevent me from getting my appeal. But in the end, he had to concede. And uh, Do you want to just give people a bit of background and the reason and how and why he well, reluctantly what? had to... Give what happened was like, the solicitors are so fucking useless. I thought I used that against them in our favour, and uh, I already prepared my paperwork as if the solicitor didn't arrive. So I just handed it in once the solicitor didn't arrive, and the uh, the, the judge was real pissed off that because uh, he thought we were going to have it all in and out, done and dusted, but uh, he was pissed off because no solicitor or or barrister turned up from the, my side so then he rang the solicitor's office to find out what's going on they then turned around and said he's got no legal aid for one of them for well it's i didn't have any deals from the from the first from the very offset he's never wanted to deal the film in one mm. yeah i know but basically the judge was they confirmed for one of the appeals the, the two appeals were going to be run back to back one after the other over two days and for one of the appeals, the solicitor said there is legal aid, and for the other one, there isn't. But nobody turned up, even for the one that there is. Yeah. So, I mean, basically, I was dropped in the deep end without any representation, and I'm still asking for full disclosure. And even that, he didn't want to give it to me. He's asking me, why do you want it? And I told him I'm entitled to it. I know my rights. I want to see it. And then he's like, what do you want to see on it? What are you expecting to see? I said, well, I don't know until I see it. So, you know, but I want it. Yeah. And uh, I'm going to put in my Section 8 and I'm going to put in my uh, witness request forms and all the rest of it. And basically the application went in on two reasons. Yeah. What was the reasons? I can't remember. Oh, oh, no, no, ain't it your automatic right to have it? Uh, basically, the overriding objective of the uh, courts... Yeah, 1.1. 1. 1. ...criminal and civil, one, yeah, and then in, in sub-details, okay, is that trials are dealt with fairly and justly, and that means treating parties uh, on an equal footing... And so what we were saying is, well, how many times has the guy dropped you like this? I don't think once a barrister was there in at least three occasions until after the hearing when it was organised. And they all just said, uh, we haven't got any briefs or whatever word they use. So we weren't sure if anybody was going to turn up. And so... There was a change in circumstances from a reasonable belief based on track record that the guy will have somebody arranged, and that's why he's not in communication and doesn't answer emails, to becoming a litigant in person. And that means uh, uh, it can't be dealt with now, it needs to be adjourned, otherwise they're in breach of Article 6, uh, right to a uh, fair trial. And the judge fucking knew that he was buggered. He and didn't like it, though, did he? He hated did it. not like it at all. No. No. But Every trick. He tried every trick uh, in the book to try and not let me have it. Yeah. 
they even tried to do the one that wasn't legal aided or wasn't legible for legal aid and tried to railroad Kelvin in. And so he was asking him, where are you driving? And what you need to do is really start to do what Kelvin did, okay? Listen to the questions the judges are asking you. Stop, breathe, think, and then act. Okay, you've got to overcome this natural urge to just spurt it out, right? And basically, Calvin, just I think you said I deny it or whatever. I can't remember. Well, you also use the words that they use, like I believe I can, I believe he did. Yeah. So, but it was absolutely brilliant because the judge was so pissed off with the legal representatives because that got thrown back in their face. The officers of the court can't be asked. And they need to deal with the officers of the court. And at that point, the judge actually hinted to the prosecution uh, to put in a wasted cost order. But the wasted cost order is go straight to the solicitor but not that Calvin's going to pay any costs anyway but i'm paying nothing yeah okay but the point there is because calvin knew his rights that means he knew the duties of the court the judicial officers and the legal officers simply by knowing what their job is the judge had no choice and reluctantly and whatever unhappily unhappily made the order <laughs> and you could see the steam coming out of his ears <laughs> so that there again it might only be appear to be a small success but the point is if you know their duty and can call them out on the breach of duty or you tell them their duty they know you know and you have put them in a corner. Okay. Okay, then what happened with me today, uh, the same principles apply of what I've just described, but I'd like to uh, start with Tracy. Are you there, Tracy? No. Okay, do you want to just, from your view, give a brief summary of what you saw, and then James is here as well. He can give his view. I think Lee uh, uh, is here as well. Uh, uh, just so that p people, you know, can see, because these are three witnesses that are here today of a liability order being set aside. I'm waiting for the written order, but that's for uh, two other purposes once I get the written order. But Tracy, just give a quick summary sort of of how you felt it was. Um, well, straight from the start, the security were fantastic. So they were more than helpful and um, to accommodate us. We didn't have any problems. Um, so that was a good start. Um, we did have a, a little bit of an issue with two security upstairs, though, didn't we? I don't know what that was about, but it wasn't. They're not security, I think. Those were ushers, but the security put him straight in his place by saying, yes, we can turn around the bench after the guy insisted we couldn't, and the, the, those two guys just shut up. <laughs> and, yeah, we, which was... and the security guard helped us because the benches were all facing one way, and so by putting two facing... Uh, eight of us could face one another and sit and talk as a group. <laughs> yeah, so that that was the um, security guy downstairs who sort of forced that for us. So um, take my hat off. Uh, we're in straight away practically, but just after ten past two, I uh, don't have to wait about. Um, all sat in, um, sat down, and it was interesting to see that the council were there as observers only and not as defendants. But there, there's a, there's a bit of an issue or. Wasn't there about who was actually defendant? Was it the court or, or no, it the was council? listed that the council was the defendant, uh, but 
the claim, okay, as uh, 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 the, the accusation was that the officers of the court did not do their job and my claim was against Sefton Magistrates Court. And therefore, Liverpool Council were only an interested party because it may affect the liability order they have. Uh, Sorry. Yeah. No, that's fine, because uh, there was confusion, because it was listed as the council being defendants, but they weren't, were they? Um, so they were there observing. I think they were very nervous um, about what was going to be ruled, and rightly so, I think. Um, the judge was, in my opinion, very good. Um, he allowed you to speak um, quite freely, didn't interrupt you, um, and... Yes, he was a very good judge, in my opinion. So um, that's it. I mean, he accommodated, obviously, um, Kerry, um, which is unusual, but he, you know, um, he had to. Um, but he was very accommodating, and all in all, it's a good experience in my. And obviously, the result was fantastic. But the whole time we were there, and and every 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 person there really was was really good. So thanks, Tracy Lee. You muted. Yeah. No, he came down from Cumbria, a three-hour drive. He, he, yeah, the um, he, he, he was very good. I think he's he's waiting to get into the nitty gritty of the argument. Um, uh, you know, I don't know much, but um, I would agree with you on that one. He's very he's polite. Interested in the case, and so he's waiting for the next round. If if you get the same person, which you think you will do. I'm pretty sure it'll be. Yeah, yeah. So that's when, you know, he will then start to discuss or give rulings, I guess. I don't know. Um, okay. But a good, you know, good day. Very, you know, very amicable, even from the council. And, the, you know, and you, and you yourself were very um, uh, amicable towards, you know, all around you, really. So, yeah, well done, yeah. Okay, James, do you want to give your view? Hello? Yeah, can you hear me, man? Yeah, can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Mark, yeah. Uh, I thought, all, all down today, I thought it was, um, I thought the judge was brilliant. I mean, Darren's had him before, and he does, you know, he, he seems like he, the feeling that I get with him is, you know, he wants to learn from it himself. and uh, But... <laughs> feels like he wants us to progress. That's that's just the feeling I get, which makes it a bit um I don't know, it feels like it gives us more confidence going forward. Um which is how it should be. We should be able to get our points across. Um he seems like he wants us to get our points across. Um give us the chance to, you know, yeah. um as I say, progress. Um I thought the, as Tracy and Lee said about the court staff, they were they were good. Wasn't it? Didn't seem too good as soon as we went in. Seemed like a bit of an atmosphere when we were going through and getting searched. But when we went upstairs, you know, it they were nice upstairs, um, outside the courtroom, which again was good. Um, felt a bit strange when the, the two council people walked in. Um, it felt like they didn't want to be there, but they had to be there. Um, and let's see what the next round brings because. Um, I just feel <laughs> I, I, th I think the more and more I go in the courtroom the more confident I feel as well I think a lot of us should be doing that um, um, my, my wife enjoyed the day out as well <laughs> good right well, well well done today Mark anyway uh, uh, okay firstly I want to say today would not have been possible without other people challenging and doing this okay uh, uh, to have gained the knowledge that we've done, and Brian and I were discussing this earlier, uh, to achieve a liability order to be set aside, there is no liability order against me anymore, okay? Within two years, uh, has not been, as far as I'm aware, I don't know anybody else who's actually got a set-aside judgment, okay? Uh, so for all those naysayers and negatives, okay, um, 
uh, this here, I think, is evidence uh, which cannot be refuted. And once we get, the, once I get the written orders, we'll be doing this in detail. Okay, that by by knowing what their duty is, just like with Calvin, we know what their job is, and we are calling them out. In mine, I named the three magistrates, I named the legal advisor that wasn't doing their jobs properly. And had we not uh, gathered the knowledge that we've got as a group, today would have taken me another five or six times of not paying council tax to do it by myself. But even that, within two years, uh, as far as I know, I don't think anybody else has achieved what we did in the court today. So, th so thanks to all of you that have followed the process and had faith in what we're doing. Now we're getting the proof of the pudding. Okay. So let me just explain <clears throat> what it is. Um, in the beginning, it was interesting because he didn't use the word section 142. And, and the document's entitled Offer for the Court to Correct its the Mistakes of Its Officers. Okay? So, uh, I, I can't remember his exact words, but basically, um, he was going to, you know, basically he just said the application to, to set aside or something like that. Doesn't matter. The first thing is, the case for a set-aside order is against the court, okay? And for that, you need good reason. And basically, one of the reasons is them not doing their jobs properly. Another reason is that you act within a reasonable amount of time, i.e., you act as soon as you've got the knowledge. And the third reason is, even if we messed up as the court, if you haven't got an arguable case, it, you know, it shouldn't be set aside. <clears throat> and that the, the case law is in the notice. You know, that's in my submissions, which I've put up on the web. So within five minutes, he was satisfied that I met all three criteria. And therefore, he had no choice but to set it aside, which he did with a smile on his face. And apparently, Darren was uh, watching the count, or was it you, James, was watching the council people, and they were uh, changed their facial expressions when he said it's being set aside. Yeah, nice little, uh, nice little shake of the head to each other. Yeah, uh, I can't believe this. Yeah. <laughs> okay. So, because we know our stuff, and we're getting to present it correctly, we are leaving them no choice but to do their jobs properly. Now, because this was against the court, it's a the fifty page document. Half of that is probably explaining to the court what their job actually is. I.e., your duties are, under legislation, this, under law, that. Um, and uh, he was questioning the out-of-time thing. Uh, I didn't want to get into an, an argument with him, but actually Section 142 has no time limit. OK, he was going on the Section 111. But the Section 142, this whole thing about time limits is important. People need to really start to get it. And the, in the Ashby versus White House of Lords judgment, uh, it, it explains a lot. Equity will not suffer a wrong with a uh, remedy, which means if you do not stand on your right, you've given up your right. 
So, uh, and then the other one uh, is uh, equity does not, equity aids the vigilant, not the indolent. I.e., if you don't do, if you don't stand on your right, you are giving away your right. You need to act. Okay. So, uh, basically, he didn't, he checked with the uh, magistrate's court who confirmed the uh, that I uh, uh, you know put in the section 111 he didn't realize but they didn't say about the section 142 the section 111 was two days out of time and they rejected it the section 142 however like I say doesn't have a time limit but also uh, the court sent them the correspondence between me and the court about the section 142, but excluded the fact that I put in a 142 and a 111 at the same time. But they only dealt with the 111 uh, by saying that's out of time. So I resubmitted the 142 with changing the format to the three criteria uh, that needed to be met. So the case is against the court, not the council, for a, a set aside. For that, you need to know what's their job, and you need to call out them for not doing the job. Okay? And so the interesting thing is the arguable case. In the submissions, we have an arguable case. He's confirmed it. So the arguable case is basically what we've been saying all along from day one. April, was it April the 1st, Brian? I can't remember. Uh, two years ago, proved my obligation. So uh, hopefully all those naysayers and all of that, uh, you know, that are preaching the person, he asked me, have you paid have you paid the council tax? I said no. Basically, I confirmed the address, and then he said, Oh, the property address is different. So I said, Yeah, that's because I'm the legal title holder of the property. And uh one tenant moved out. There was a few days in between the next tenant moving in, and therefore the council quite rightly have, you know, sent me as the owner of the bill. Uh but basically we went through the issue very briefly the issue of the summons the bill versus demand notice the um what else was there in brief uh the section 33 notice or regulation 33 notice uh the fact that the costs were not submitted uh to the bench that the bench refused to uh look at my evidence that the bench uh, refused me the right to cross-examine and present my evidence, i.e. breaches of their duty. Um, and so, uh, and then the last one was basically, you know, who the hell are Parliament? They can't tell anybody what to do. So we've got an arguable case there. And that's the first confirmation we've got that we've got an arguable case. The council and them are just saying, ah, Freeman of the land and all of this. Oh, and when he was asking me about the name and the address, and I said, look, you know, I, I'm here. And yes, they've done their job right. Okay. If there's nobody there as the tenant, as the legal title holder, they have to send me the, the demand notice. I'm not a Freeman of the land thing. I'm here to try and sort out the due process of law. So... I think, again, the universe is working in our favor because he had a hearing cancelled and he read through all 50 pages. So he understood the arguments. He certainly gets them. Okay. So that order is set aside. There is no liability order against me anymore. And that there is massive step forward. By following the due process of law, 
that is the proof. If you do things properly, you will get the liability order set aside. End of. Um, so all the people that are on about, uh, you know, uh, the person about the courts being corrupt, well, guess what? This is the magistrate's court who've set aside a magistrate's court order. So don't tell me that they're corrupt and all of that. Yes, there's a lot of incompetence. Yes, there are a lot of people don't know what their job is. However, when you get to the, this was a district judge, when you get away from the lame magistrates and bloody legal advisors who are there as government revenue collection agents, when people get that into their head, the courts are not hired. Okay. The problem is nobody has ever held the officers to account. To do that, we need to know what their job is. If we don't know what their job is, then we be then we are behaving like little children, blaming everybody else for our problems. This shows you if we put in the time, put in the effort to understand what's going on, and it's fair and just, then we will get results. Why? If they're corrupt or not, or Freemasons or not, is irrelevant. Because once you have the law on your side, then they will do their jobs properly. Okay? So what's going to come out of this is when I get it in writing, guess what I've got? I have the proof that they've not done their jobs properly, i.e. I will be suing the uh, three magistrates and the legal advisor because the district judges confirmed they didn't do their job properly. Mark. Yeah? Well, I can verify what you're saying. The course is not hired because I was in court last week for council tax. Yeah. We before. And I sat there, nine, uh, 10 o'clock, got there. Yeah. Somebody went in for council tax. So when he came out, I said, council tax? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then a young man went in with a working clothes on. He went in. When he came out, I said, council tax? Magistrate court. He went, no, I've been a naughty boy. So the courtroom, he, he were looking at two different cases. The courtroom can't be hired. Of course it can't, it can't but... This year, only if people go and witness it themselves, because yeah, these people got to that listen yeah, to other people's opinions, there. okay, they're just oh, time wasters. Yeah. Basically, if the courts are corrupt, okay, I wouldn't have got that judgment today. They would never have set aside my liability order. No, no, you're right. Now, the magnitude of that, okay. It's sending a message to the lower, to the lay magistrates and the legal advisors, because when they get the claim against them, okay, they are going to really talk about this. <laughs> and oh, yeah. It's going to spread, okay? And the message is simple. The district judge has confirmed that you lay magistrates and legal advisors had better start doing your jobs properly. You got it. Okay. Uh, so, hey, explain, explain this to me then, right? Yeah. I was in court uh, about a week and a half ago. Magistrates court, three magistrates there, council tax, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So when we walked in, he said, right, uh, to the council officer, can you go on the stand and swear on oath that you're going to tell the truth, the old truth, nothing but a truth. Yes, yeah, so we went on there, swore, da, da, da. Mm -hmm. I said, can I go on there now and, and do the same? And they all stood up and said, we can't hear this case adjourned. Yeah. Why was that? Uh, well, I mean, basically, why was that? You'd have to ask them. Okay. Yeah, but, but they adjourned. Let, I me, to let me just them. finish with this one, Norman. Uh, yeah. And we can, because I want to just try and keep it short for the, well, short, it's probably bloody long. I can't keep anything short. <laughs> <laughs> and then we can go back to generalities. Okay. Um, so uh, basically, the the judge opened the door for them to apply again 
to take me to court for council tax. Um, and uh, so I've been asked to uh, summarize, you, you know, narrow down the issues. I've got 28 days to do that. And they have 28 days to respond because I said uh, that uh, they don't do anything unless the court orders. And previously I had a court order telling them to respond and they didn't bother. So can you please make a court order forcing them to respond? Uh, which he said he'll do. Uh, he didn't go as far as saying, I wanted a full, accurate and complete response. He said that, no, he can't do that. But anyway, I've got 28 days to basically summarize because of the 50 pages, half of it is the case against the council. I mean, against the court, not against the council tax. So already that's going to be a 25 page document only against the council tax, okay? They've got 28 days to respond. And uh, I've been actually in with this guy, it was the head of revenue services, Frank Lamb, uh, in Liverpool. And uh, so I said, hi, Mark, and nice to meet you. It's nice to put a face to the name sort of thing. Um, and afterwards, when we got out, uh, uh, he actually approached me and said, uh, are you going to pay the council tax? I said, no bloody chance. It's not about the 75 quid. This is about the principle. And I said, you can take this to judicial review and it's not going to cost me anything. But the only way I can get it into judicial review is by going back into the magistrate's court and he confirmed, yeah, he can take it to judicial review, but he's not going to. Okay. But hopefully, uh, after I get his response, in principle, he's happy for me to sit down with the legal department and we go and have a chat to narrow the issues down before we, the hearing, which is August, I think. So what I'm saying here is, look, Understand what you're doing. Know your stuff, all right? And know how to move the court, to force the court to get the judges to do their jobs properly. Uh, and if you do that, just like Calvin did uh, on Monday and I've done today, you will get results. When they know that they're being watched and we know what their job is, their behavior changes. But this is going to send a massive ripple down through the lower, through the lay magistrates and the legal advisors. Because one of the things that the legal advisor did wrong, failed to direct the court in accordance with the law. That's their job to put the court with relevant law. Oh, and in regard to statute law, I said to him, I fully understand the function, your statutory duty. But one problem we're having with the magistrates is they are saying we are statutory obliged to make the liability order. The answer to that is yes, you're correct. You are statutory obliged to check the council is doing its job properly and has followed the correct procedure. That is your statutory duty. However, your obligation is under your oath to law. And this judge gets it. Okay. So it, 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 it's very significant, this, because it's going a long way. Because guess what? Once I've got that order, I'm going to be writing to the certain magistrate's court and ask them if they've set aside all three and a half thousand liability orders that were made on the day. Okay. Mark, can I interject just a moment? Yeah. Um, clearly, you were in correspondence with the council before they issued or requested it. Oh, no, I'm on that blacklist. They don't talk to me. No, yes, but at, when this first started, mm -hmm. you, you were on a bulk listing. Yeah. 
So, so already the the council have misrepresented the case in your case to the magistrate. So at that point, the magistrate... Uh, uh, yeah, this is a point that I made in regards to the um, summons. Okay? I agree appearance cures defect. I absolutely in equity agree with that. The idea is to get the person to answer to the complaint. Simple. However, what they haven't talked about is the issue of what is the summons. The summons actually is about do the parties have standing? Is there a cause of action? Uh, and the one that they're ignoring is by issuing the summons, the court is accepting jurisdiction to resolve the dispute. And like I said to the judge today, by issuing the summons, the court has accepted jurisdiction to resolve the dispute unless the council has failed to inform them of the dispute. And therefore, once the dispute is known to the court, if they do not have jurisdiction to resolve the dispute, they should dismiss the, the complaint. Thank okay, you. This is what we're trying to argue. Does that indirectly answer your question? I think that's what you asked. Yeah, no, I, I presume, though, uh, you're, you're going to be trying to sue the council or sue the no, council. No, 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 I'm suing, I will be suing the three magistrates who are named in my document and the legal advisor. Who was but they weren't. The if they, if the council misrepresented the ever the the production of the summons, then the council is at fault for getting it as far as the magistrates. Uh, yeah, no, that's another issue. I yeah. agree. But the court, once they saw that they can't deal with the matter, should have dismissed the complaint. So yeah, the council is misrepresented, but the court has failed to act correctly by once that they were with the knowledge, then they should have dismissed the case. Because accepting jurisdiction says, I can resolve this case. It's not saying, okay, I can only do the statutory part of my uh, oath, affirmation or attestation, my judicial oath. Because the judicial oath is to law and there are three sources of law statutory law, uh, common law, and custom. So they, by only doing their statutory, uh, upholding statute law, they are breaching their oath, which is a direct breach of contract, which is a serious thing, an affront to the rule of law. Yeah. <laughs> okay, thanks, Mark. Mark, so... Have I got this right? That uh, I've got a section one 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 in, yeah, that has uh, escalated to the county court. No, no, the crown court. No, to the crown court. No. Yes. Uh, so I I submitted section one one one. Yeah. They answered and said that um, I had to complete this form, which was to the crown court. Okay, and I uh, have section one 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 is for the people that made the decisions to explain their decisions. Yes, the Crown Court's got nothing to do with it. Should have nothing to do with it. So I I I, uh, I originally sent a check and the all the documents to the magistrates court. Is this with council tax? Yet? This is council tax. Yeah. Okay. For them, to, uh, that was the application. Okay, under section one one one. Yeah, I was then told that, that this was not um, that they couldn't deal with it, and that I had to complete. It. Yes. <laughs> God Almighty, these courts have no idea what they're doing. Okay, I know. And so then they sent me a. Uh, but bearing in mind, if you remember, mm. Mark, at the time, we were talking about potentially. Uh, having all three magistrates either going for misconduct in public office yeah, yeah, yeah. or perverting the course of justice. Yeah. Okay. So when I received the form from them, mm. that was basically a criminal form. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, oh, this is progressing. 
Oh, this is a, a, just the appeal form. What, what, what form is that, Calvin? I can't remember. It sounds to me like an appeal form. Uh, it was... Yes, it, it was an appeal form, but it was 35-2. I can get back to the... Uh, yeah, anyway. yeah, part 35, I think, is appeals, Calvin. Yes, yeah. 35-2, uh, okay. I seem to remember. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah. Anyway, so I, I completed the form and sent it off to the uh, to the Crown Court, uh, yeah. and I haven't received anything. And this was back in October last year. Yeah, I finally, you know, sort of asked them to tell me what's going on. I haven't received an answer yet. Mm. But am I getting this right that when you do get your ruling on the 9th of April? Okay, and uh, the 9th of April is uh, specifically regarding attachment uh, uh, charging orders on properties from council. Okay, Trust. so whatever it is that you did in court this week, mm -hmm. today, no, yesterday, no, this was today, We're today, just, yeah, whatever you've achieved in court today, mm -hmm. okay. Basically, it applies to me because it is the magistrates did not do their job. Right. So this also with Caroline, okay, they have a duty. Okay, again, people, we, we're we narrowing down. We're getting better with how we're doing our submissions and the way that we're doing them, right? Basically, uh, we, you need to, for Section 111, basically you need to identify the issues. So, for instance, they didn't give a reasoned judgment. Yeah. They didn't consider the costs. They didn't give me the right to cross-examine the witnesses. They didn't, whatever, give me yep. the right to present my case. And, and so the Section 111, basically, you the idea of a statement of case is that uh, we, and generally it'll be litigants in person that are asking for this, in effect, we are, you know, we don't know what we're doing. So... What they're uh, doing is, I can't remember how much they charge Ahmed. Well, in fact, you'll know how much is a section 111 now, 265 or something. What, well, you're asking me? Yeah. He was 137, 147. Okay. Whatever it is. Yeah. But the idea is that experienced legal professionals presented in a format your questions for the high court to answer. OK, so, for instance, in this one here, the section 111 is a series of questions. So, uh, you know, uh, is uh, is the legal advisor duty bound to um, put the court with all relevant law and procedure? Yes or no? They need to then present the case because I'm saying they didn't. And I'm asking the High Court, do, are they under, do they have a duty to do it? They need to then prepare the legal arguments to go to the High Court for judicial review. But basically, um, we'll talk about Section 111 separately. We'll get onto all of this detail as time goes on. But basically, uh, a Section 111 they need to prepare it within 21 days or refuse. They have a 21-day time limit. And if they do not, they are in breach of their duty. So now that we're clear with that one, after 21 days, you call them out and you say you are in breach of your duty. They no longer can decline because within 21 days, they should, to produce the, the draft uh, statement of case for the High Court, they have 21 days. Therefore, to decline it must be less or within that 21 days. So that there is how, uh, because in the beginning, Calvin and I couldn't work out what's their bloody time limit. We must be able to force them somehow. Okay, but that's the way to do it. Uh, so essentially, it's a statement of case where they give their reason as to how they reached whatever your question of law is. Okay.